I find you learn more about a place by walking rather than driving or flying. It is while wandering the roads and paths that you meet people, see the world around you, and smell its aromas. I'm Damon Redfern, and my goal is to walk and hike the dusty outcrops and fertile valleys of China in search of what makes the world's most populous nation a source of global fascination. I'm currently traveling from Guizhou province to Guangxi, where I'll meet a fascinating tribe called the Yao, whose women are renowned for their long flowing locks. The different minority groups I met at Guangxi are defined by their ancient customs and traditional beliefs. These are hard-working farmers whose relationship with the land is central to their identity. For longer than anyone can remember, the people in this part of China have worked the land, while the land has worked itself into their myths and legends. This intricately carved mountainside is called the Dragon's Backbone, a name that reflects the powerful sway the land holds over its residents and the impact of the inhabitants have had on the land. Both are indelibly linked. It is the fragility and harshness of the land that gives the next group of people I was to meet, the Yao, so much faith in their ancient ways. They cling to their traditional beliefs with the same tenacity it took to carve these terraces. They also seem to be very willing to share their stories with me over a meal, a universal offering I'm always willing to accept. Now this is a tradition for which no guidebook can prepare you. I believe it roughly translates as drinking with the locals. My new Yao friends were like the people I became closest to when I lived in Africa. They are uncomplicated and sincere. They spend their days living pretty much like their ancestors have for centuries, tending to chores, raising children, and passing along the ways and wisdom of the ages. Most here are Taoists, and live according to the three jewels of the Tao, compassion, moderation, and humility. This informs every aspect of their world, and is one of the reasons why this village is a true community, not just a collection of homes. Ashun is an interesting example of the power of this approach. Like so many young women, she felt the draw of the big city, but unlike most, she returned home after a few months. The story shows that these small communities can survive in an era of iPods and video How games. How does a young woman spend her time in this village? Young ladies in this village, uh, probably during this season, they will go outside to do some works, like babysit babysitter, and some of the young ladies will do some farming in the village. Oh, uh, like the young uh, sisters there, they often get together and they will sew the embroideries all day, and they will chatting in different uh, families, and they will get together really have a fun day here in this village. Could you describe the typical day in this village for a young woman like yourself? Their life here in this village is quite simple. For example, they will get up very early and after a simple breakfast, they will go to farming and probably after three to four hours, they will back then to their home to have their lunch. And after a short break, they will back then to have the farming again. And I think it's around five o'clock, they will back to the home and start cooking for the dinner. And usually they will get to buy it very early. What is your most special memory in this village? When she was a little girl, a girl around 10 years old, and she, there is no TV set in this village. So she uh, walked a really long road to another home to watch TV. And it's really getting very dark there. So uh, she was bite by a sneak. And uh, her father just saw, where's my daughter? And she, uh, he just uh, walked around the village. And then he found that uh, Ashyang was bite by a sneak. And he bring medicine for her to cure the, the wood. So she's really, and uh, she's really, she cannot forget this kind of moment in her childhood. No, no. Has the advent of television made a big difference in her community? Mm -hmm. uh, 
definitely, TV side brings a lot of influence to this village. Like uh, Ashan told me that her grandma or uh, her grandfather never worked outside of the village. So uh, TV really brings them the outside world, let them know what happened in the outside world. So I think TV really brings a lot of influence to this uh, village. Does what they see on television make them want to leave the village? I think TV really brings them a lot of influence. Like her grandma taught Ashyang that they really want to have a different life, like what happened in the outside world. Because in the village, it's very poor. So they really want to enjoy what life the outside people enjoy. Do you believe in spirits? Do you believe in spirits? Do you believe in spirits? <laughs> she believe it. Is the one special spirit that she believes in? She told me that they believe spirits in this village and she told me if her grandmother gets sick and they will have some of the, the people, like they will uh, do some spiritual here to protect the, the spiritual of his, her grandmother, something like that, something like that. So they, she'd call a shaman? Yeah, shaman, right. Mm -hmm. Are you proud of being Yao? <laughs> Definitely, she's very proud of, she's a Yao people. The villagers here, they really love their village. They cherish their tradition and they cherish their custom. So I think this village will survive and prosper. There is something undeniably free about being in the country. The mountains in the distance, the terraced fields below, the seemingly endless scenes of land and sky, people and communities. This is life in rural China, and it feels right, secure and comfortable. But like the very environment that sustains the local farmers, the society that supports them is fragile and vulnerable. And as I begin to make my way from the countryside back to the cities and towns of southwest China, I am struck with the realization that life here, as in the rest of the world, is really quite tenuous. The steady march of progress is unstoppable. The land will feel the impact, and so, of course, will the people. Life will change, and these small clusters of minority groups will be buffeted by pressures from both within and without but I feel confident in their ability to adapt, to survive. Our world will be a different place in a few short years, and so will Guangxi province. However, if ever my path brings me back to these parts, I am confident I will still find people who live life as it should be.